the evolution of the church was accelerated by the injustices of the Marcos regime. For instance, in 1972, when martial law was declared, there was a radio station in Gihongan, DYWC. It was run by Franciscans. The director was Father Bruno Hicks. Now, they came to him and said, please do not talk about the injustice of the Hashenderos or the injustice of the military or the injustice of the government because we need peace on these days. And he said, in conscience, I cannot keep quiet. That's what he said. So almost immediately after martial law was declared, Bruno Hicks was deported and the station was closed down. The Franciscan radio station, which they built with blood. Very soon after that, well, not very soon, four years later, another radio station run by the Jesuits, TXBB, in Malai Balai Bukidnan, was closed down by the military. At the same time, the Marinol radio station in Tagum Davao, DXCD, was closed by the military. At the same time, a little newspaper in Manila, which I was editing, called The Communicator, was raided and closed. And I had guards outside my house for two full years. I was on trial for 12 days in Camp Krame. Now, these instances, the bishops felt, were suppressions of freedom of speech. They felt that the Franciscans were justified in everything they said. They felt that Bishop Claver was perhaps a little outspoken, but what he said was true. They felt that the Marinol priests in Tagum Dava were really trying to defend the poor. So when they were suppressed this way, they could not help but say this government is not allowing freedom of speech. And the, in the, they said again and again, this was their growth. They kept saying, we are living in a climate of fear, and democracy cannot flourish in a climate of fear. Now, the, in all of the votes, the, if you took the votes of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines through the year, you would see the progression. In the beginning, they were reluctant to say anything that could be interpreted as being hostile to the regime. Why? Because they are rooted in the belief that you must have respect for authority. Now, this government is the duly elected government, and let us not cause trouble. That is their general attitude. But the bishops who were saying, we have to say this, they were saying, well, we know it is causing trouble, but we have no choice, because if we don't speak, no one will speak. No, this transformation crystallized violently in the last five years before the exit of Marcos, a simple example would be a little priest in Kibawe, a Jesuit, who all he wanted to do was stand up for the rights of the people, that's all. He had no desire to be a political leader. He wound up as the only witness in a rape case. No one else would talk, but he felt that before God, he had to talk. So they sent him three notes saying, if you don't shut up, we are going to kill you. He had a little blackboard newspaper outside of his convento, which I helped him to build. I got him the funds for it and trained him to use it. So he was putting the news on this blackboard. And they said, if they destroyed the blackboard. And then the people built it up again. And so the, after he got the three notes saying, shut up or we will kill you, he said, you know, in conscience, I cannot shut up. So I guess they're going to kill me. And they came around to his convento, had the houseboy call him to his door, and shot him dead with a forty-five at a distance of six inches. We knew who pulled the trigger. We knew who gave the order. He was executed by the government. He was executed by the military. One week after that, the government announced in Manila he was killed by the NPA. Well, Bishop Claver said he was not killed by the NPA. The government said the case is closed, and the bishop said it is not closed. Now, that was the, the church speaking out. They, they felt we, 
We cannot keep quiet when the priest is lying there in a pool of his own blood. We, we have to do something. Now that was how the church grew. And when they said to Bishop Claver, what are you going to do about Kibawe? He said, we will send another priest to Kibawe. And if he is killed, we will send another priest to Kibawe. And if he is killed, we will send another priest to Kibawe. Now that, that was the evolution. They, they, it wasn't that they wanted trouble, but they just couldn't see how to avoid it. They felt they had to speak for the people because nobody else was speaking. 